But right now, without further ado, I'd like to welcome on our special guest, Jeb Bravowski from Montreal Impact. Jeb, welcome. Thank you very much. Appreciate you having me. It is my pleasure having you on, Jeb. Before we get into the X's and O's on the field and getting ready for 2013 MLS season, I want to talk about a special story about yourself uh, that you just experienced coming back from Guatemala on a humanitarian effort. Tell us a little bit about this and why you decided to do this. Uh, yeah, my uh, my wife and I just got back from Guatemala before preseason started uh, with my nonprofit that I began uh, a few years ago. And what we like to do is is spread the passion of football around the world uh, to young children uh, in in poor uh, poor areas of the world. So you know, we worked with 600 orphans in Guatemala, for instance. And the year before that, we worked with um, slum children in India. So it was uh, it was a great experience for for both of us, like it always is. But um, you know, we go down there and we uh, we split up the boys and the girls, and and I usually take the boys and, and teach them about uh, you know the uh, responsibility of of uh, treating women right in their life and and how a true uh, true man treats a uh, treats a woman well, and that's basically how we uh, that's our message with the boys and the girls is we want them to, we want them to feel empowered you know through soccer we want them to feel like they're part of a team and they're part of something greater than themselves and. I think Caitlin does a does a fantastic job with them, and uh, and then after the camps, we we give them a little, uh, you know, a soccer ball to take away, a T-shirt to take away, and if they have any health questions, then they come come up to Caitlin and ask her. And so we're we're just there to help and, and share the passion of the game, and it's very rewarding not only for us but but for the children as well. And um, it's always a good thing on the off season to. Uh, you know, when you're away from the game, I can never really stay away for, for too long. And, and I think uh, that's, you know, the most fulfilling thing I could ever do. Well, Jeb, let me tell you, first of all, as a parent of two boys and, and as someone that's been married close to 25 years, I thank you as a human being for doing what you have just done with uh, uh, Caitlin and going down there and giving back. But there had to be some reason for you to decide to do this. What was the reason? Well, growing up, I've always had a um, just you know something special in my heart for orphans. I was adopted at a very young age as well, um, and I, I could have been in, in many of their situations. And, and I know that uh, you know these kids don't take anything for granted, and, and they have they have the whole world in front of them, and sometimes they don't see it. And I think they just takes an outsider sometimes to you know if it's a professional athlete, I think that's the best uh, that's the best avenue for some of these children uh, because all they want is a football, and all they want is, is something. You know, to to keep their mind off of their day to day grind, and uh, I think if more professional footballers, you know, especially grassroots, uh, go back to their hometowns and really involve the children, uh, I think they're going to be they're going to find that it's more rewarding than uh, you know going home in the off season and laying on a beach. I think it's uh, I think it's a great thing that uh, that you know a lot of guys in this league do. They go around and they do humanitarian efforts, and and hopefully we can get more boys on the on the trail. Yeah. So I think. Uh, it's just something that I've always wanted to do with my life. I took uh, a peace studies courses in the uh, University of Notre Dame, and it had really grasped my heart. And uh, and so, you know, in my off season, this is this is what I choose to do. You know, uh, Jeb, we are so grateful and so thankful in in North America for all we've got, especially for the youth in Canada and the U.S. of A. The kids are blessed with so many resources, uh, so much food in many cases in many people's homes, so much clothing, so much of everything. But you put it all in perspective there. But I love what you said that a lot of guys in their off season and when they have time should really give back. And I and I gotta tell you, I think it's important also to give back a lot in the city that they're playing in or maybe the college town the university town and go to some of the areas that maybe are harder hit and help out those kids and and maybe they they want to learn how to pass a ball or shoot a ball what do you think yeah no i completely agree 100 percent. i think you know especially going to different places in the world it's interesting to see who the kids relate to and so in guatemala the two players you know that always came up were carlos ruiz and marco papa and, you know, no one, no one knew, you know, they didn't have TVs on there, so they didn't know who Beckham was. They didn't know who Thierry Henry was. But, yeah, they, they know they're heroes, they're hometown heroes. And, uh, you know, just by saying, you know, look, I, I played against guys like Marco Papa, you know, their eyes light up and, and they say, you know, that, uh, you know, I want to be Marco Papa someday. And, and to have, you know, it, it, even uh, any professional athlete, uh, you know, from any, uh, city organization, I think uh, you know MLS does a great job with the MLS works, but 
I think if uh, if more guys just take it upon themselves, if they have their own project they want to do, uh, by all means, you know, go go set it up yourself. And, and especially, uh, I think they're going to find a community around them that's that's going to be willing to help. You know, Jeb, a lot of times in North America, we complain about the quality of fields. We complain uh, of the lack of fields. We complain about facilities that uh, we don't have enough of. But you were down there in Guatemala, and I've heard a lot of other stories from other players that have gone down to Haiti, uh, to Cuba, and they tell me that these children are playing basically on dirt fields with rocks. And here again, we are so blessed. Oh, it's it's terrible. I mean, it's dirt fields, um, you know, broken glass. Uh, it's honestly anything that you could ever think about, uh, you know, that you're, you don't want your children around that uh, these kids are playing with, and yet they have the biggest smiles on their faces. Uh, you know, they, they take a hard fall, they take a hard tackle, and they have the biggest smile on their face because, you know, that's the passion of the game. That's, that's what they're there for. And, uh, you know, I, I remember being in the, in the slums of India, and, and these kids, you know, I, I've coached a lot of camps in, in North America, and it's, uh, it's funny to see, um, you know, the, the passion and the hard tackles that go on on both sides of the world. And yet, the, for some reason, I feel like, uh, you know, the, the kids who have the least are smiling the most. And so when I'm always in North America, I try to encourage the kids, you know, you're out here for fun. You're out here because, you know, this is this is a passion, and this is what it's going to, if you want to make it into a career, you can make it into a career. But, you know, a lot of people just have a job, and, and they go out and want to kick a soccer ball because it's the most fun thing in their life. And, and yet these kids, you know, these kids... Uh, if they have a soccer ball in India or a soccer ball in Guatemala, their life is made for, for years and years. And so um, I think, you know, coming back with a message to North American kids is, is really value what you have. And, you know, uh, you know, the soccer ball that you have, the cleats that you have, um, none of that matters. None of, none of the flashiness, none of the, the, um, the most expensive stuff matters. It's, uh, it's what's in your heart and what's in your brain. And, and if, uh, if you want to make something of yourself in this, in this sport, then you can. Jeb, amazing story. I've got goosebumps. I've got chills of you explaining some of the stories from all over the world that you've just explained. And again, congratulations. Well done. Keep going because it's not always about the wins, the losses, the championships, or the pro contracts. It's stuff like this that you're doing by giving back and outstanding, outstanding, Jeb. I want to talk a little bit, Jeb, before we let you go, obviously, about uh, 2013 season, getting ready uh, very shortly to get underway with the Montreal Impact. And I want to talk about a young guy like yourself, really, really uh, getting into the minds of the veterans, the Italian veterans, World Cup stars like Marco DeVaio, Alessandro Nesta, Matteo Ferrari. How have they helped you uh, as a young player on the field, but also off the field? Uh, they've been, you know, instrumental in the past year. Uh, I know, you know, even Marco coming in uh, later on in the season. We had Bernardo Carati before that, and, and the, you know, all these guys are very approachable, and uh, and they want to teach young guys like myself and you know, Zarek and, and all these guys in the back that we have. That you know, we don't have. Um, we don't have the years, you know, but we, we have the heart and, and we have the brain. And I think that uh, Nesta and Mateo and, you know, Nelson and all these boys, uh, they, they really want to take us under their wing and, and make us into better soccer players and better men off the field. So I like to, uh, I like to talk to them on and off the field a little bit. Um, and and I really I just ask them questions about their history and their past and, and to hear about players, you know, that they've played against. And, and you know, I know Paolo Maldini, uh, uh, was was you know one of the greatest players growing up that I could ever watch, and I asked Nesta about him and what he does on and off the field because you know he's he's a great friend of his, and it's it's so interesting to see those intimate stories that uh, you never you know if he wasn't on this team I'd never get the chance to ask, and so I see it as an opportunity as a young guy to to say okay there's a guy on this team that uh, you know has won a World Cup has been to you know the European uh, Champions League and, and and all this experience that uh, you know I can only dream of having and so for me not to pick his brain I, I, I think would be a crime so uh, I think while we got him here uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna annoy him a bit so now Jeb a defender is a defender all over the world but obviously in Italy defending the game is a specialty it's been that for forever and a guy like Alessandro Nesta who is a world class player comes over here, yourself a U.S. born player and also some Canadian players uh, in that position. What can he bring to help mold you into more of the, let's say, Italian, European defending style, 
you know, aside from the North American defending style that you've learned all your career? Yeah, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's a personal uh, adaptability test, basically. It's, it, he comes in and, um, you know, like I said, you'd be a fool not to learn from him. And whether, you know, you want to be bullheaded or not about uh, American, you know, soccer style or not, I think it's great to have in your arsenal, you know, a different flair, a different uh, style that you can always bring because, uh, you know, the Houston Dynamo are not going to play the same uh, as D.C. United on the day, you know, sometimes. So uh, as a defender, I think just to, just to emulate different, uh, different styles and, and different uh, ways that you can uh, impact the game, I think it's going to be, you know, it's going to be more important for us going forward, especially as young players. But you know, like you said, I think it's just, it's very important that uh, we grasp if, if they want if the older guys and the experienced guys tend to want a certain style, I think, you know, us young guys, we have to take it upon ourselves to adapt and, uh, and to learn because, you know, we have to be sponges at this point in our career, and uh, that's, that's the only way we're going to get better. Jeb, you've played for two Canadian franchises in MLS, Vancouver and Montreal. You were born in Colorado, and I might add, Colorado is a very, very special place for developing players. Uh, Not too long ago, we saw the Colorado Rapids winning the MLS championship right here in the city of Toronto. But I want to ask you, what what have you seen that the American player has really uh, developed and grown a lot faster than the Canadian player in your travels in both Canadian cities and in the U.S., because as we've seen, Jeb, here in Canada, we have a very, very hard time in getting back to the World Cup, where the USA, really, for my money, is knocking on the door at really seriously one day trying to, to go for it all. Yeah, I mean, I think there's always going to be a difference, whether you go to USA or Canada or, you know, anywhere around the world, you know, the other places I've traveled. Um, you know, all these coaches, these youth coaches are, are asking me, um, you know, what, what to do differently and, and how to, you know, uh, change the infrastructure and et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, I, I think with all the camps that I've done in the USA and Canada, there, there isn't much of a difference with the youth. You know, I think there's, there's great potential in both countries. Um, you know, I, there's great coaches in both countries. Uh, I was very fortunate to grow up in Colorado where, uh, the Rush, um, you know, club was, was so fantastic. And I have a teammate playing with me, Colin Warner, uh, out here in Montreal. And, uh, and so that was, a, that was a great experience growing up. But, you know, I've noticed a lot of good Canadian players since I've been up here in, ca- in Canada. You know, they come on trial. And, and you know, they, they do have a, a little spark to them, and they do have some fight. And I think, um, you know, I think Canada is knocking on the door, to be quite honest. I think their national team is, is doing well. And, I, you know, talking to Patrice Bernier in, in the locker room, um, you know, I know he was frustrated coming back uh, from the loss um, in the, the World Cup qualifying. But... Uh, I think he's very positive about the Canadian national team, and and I know Jurgen Klinsmann is doing some great things with uh, with the youth in, in the United States. So, you know, uh, whether whether I'm a Canadian citizen or a U.S. citizen somewhere down the road, I you know I hope to get a call from from any of the national teams. So. Well said, Jeb. We won't keep you much longer, but uh, I had Colin Warner on my show a few months ago. Great guy, great personality, down to earth. But we'll close it out with this, Jeb. What are you expecting this year with new head coach coming in there, Marco Schellenbaum? What type of, of, uh, of game does he want to play, and has he had a chance to speak to him? What does he expect from you? Yeah, uh, Marco's come in uh, you know, as a new boss and, and done fantastically well in the first week. I think everyone's got uh, the utmost respect for him and his, his coaching career. I think he's just going to look for us, you know, not only to uh, to impose ourselves, you know, as technically on the field, but also tactically. I think he wants us to be a very smart team this year, very disciplined, um, and also a very fit team. I think, you know, we've we've hit the ground running pretty hard in uh, in preseason so far, and uh, you know, we have a great fitness coach, Paulo, who's who's really uh, kicking us in the rear this year. So, um, you know, expect us to be very fit, um, and expect us to to want to keep the ball this year. I think. Uh, we have good things uh, looking ahead, and for myself, um, you know, whether I play right back or left back, I'm just looking to uh, to improve both defensively and offensively, and, and get up the field and see if I can uh, impact the final third a little bit. I tell you what, Jeb, but you put a smile on my face because I know firsthand experience from my good friend Paolo Pagioni, who has joined the Impact, watching him train my own son as well he won't let up on you Jeb he's going to go hard on you all season long for the betterment of yourself and your whole team you're under good hands with Paulo and again Jeb good luck to you congratulations on that great foundation you have started keep it up and good luck in 2013 season with the Montreal Impact my friend 
Thank you so much. Appreciate it. It is a pleasure having you on. That is Montreal Impact Defender Jeb Brawowski. What a guy. And again, congratulations to him and all the great work he has done in Guatemala.